Well, hello and welcome to our special Anzac Sunday service. We're so pleased you can join us for online church. My name's the Reverend Matt Hazelwood. It's my pleasure to welcome you to our Anzac Sunday service. We are gathered here in the sight of God as loyal citizens of Australia to honour the memory of those who've made the supreme sacrifice while serving our nation in time of war or peacekeeping operations. As we stand at this hour, let us offer thanks to God for the remembrance of the sacrifices made by the original Anzacs and countless others before and since then, and for the countless blessings granted to our people in peace and war. Let us give thanks for our democratic system of government and pray that God may continue to bless us with freedom and peace. Finally, let us dedicate ourselves to serve others as faithfully as those who have gone before us. In silence, let us be conscious of God's presence with us. We're now going to have a time to sing, and uh, this is a wonderful opportunity to reflect on the great hope and promises of God to us. God is our strength and refuge. extraordinary time with such protective measures that's really closing down most of, of our world today and, and it's even restricting what is one of our most important national events uh, which is Anzac Day. And I think back to what it must have been like for Australians in World War I. You can think back there was 5 million Australians at the time, 62,000 of them were killed, 150,000 of them were wounded, 400,000 returned from war. So 
about one in three households were affected by the war directly. And when those circumstances, they, they, they shout out things that they did then and they shout out today to us. We have to cling to those truths that Christ died for us, that he demonstrates his love for us. God does in that Christ died for us. And I know we know that, but clinging to that can be a difficult thing to do in these circumstances. And it's, a, it's a been a very big year for the Australian Defence Force. We've had a whole raft of things happen in fairly recent times. We had the bushfires with our support to that. We've had floods. We've had uh, aid sent to Vanuatu and to Fiji. And we're operations around the globe. And, and now we're in the midst of this coronavirus uh, issue. And so on this Anzac Day, would you pray for your Defence Force? Would you pray that they would discharge their duties with diligence and dedication? Would you pray that they would be courageous and compassionate, that they would bring justice and peace and hope as they discharge their duties, and that they would come to Jesus as ones who were weary and heavy laden, that they would find their rest, rest for their souls, as they contemplate Jesus as their Lord and Saviour when they're thinking about eternity. And pray for those who've been affected by war, Pray that our Heavenly Father would heal the wounded, would bind the brokenhearted, and would comfort the suffering. Pray for our leaders too, both in the Defence Force and our political leaders, that they'd make wise decisions as we face these very uncertain times. Thank the Lord for their good decisions, for the way that they have handled the coronavirus crisis, and pray that they would be kind and considerate as well as prudent and practical as they go through the months and the weeks ahead. Pray for God to be glorified this ends of day too. Amen. The psalmist writes, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the glory of his name. Give him glorious praise. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul and all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us and write your commandments in our hearts by your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you've given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always thankfully receive the immeasurable benefit of his sacrifice and also daily endeavour to follow in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forevermore. Amen. Our local federal member, Paul Fletcher, will bring us our Bible readings now. Well, I'm Paul Fletcher, member for Bradfield, and I'm really pleased to be here at this combined St Martin's and St Peter's virtual service uh, for the Sunday following Anzac Day, where, of course, we're marking the service and sacrifice 
of so many Australians. Uh, we're doing it in a different format this year, but it's just as important as ever. And the first reading is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in up uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Well, the next reading is John 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remained in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. Well, let's declare our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of our Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, and we believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. It'll be helpful if you can have your Bible at home open to John 15, or you can open the Bible tab in our online portal and select John 15, and we're picking it up from verse 9. Well, today's Anzac Sunday, and it is a wonderful opportunity to remember, to reflect on the sacrifices of others, so we have the peace that we enjoy now. The stories, the memories, they speak to the resilience and the love that we need now as we live in this period of isolation, as we live in this pandemic. There's one particular story that I find very moving I just wanted to share with you today. It's the story of Australians on the Western Front who served in the 5th Division. They paid a terrible price in lives lost in a diversionary battle in Fromel on 19th of July, 
1916. The blood of more than 1,700 Australians was shed on the soil in France, in Fromelles and the Pheasant Woods. Australian diggers attacked a German strong point called the Sugarloaf. But to get there, they had to pass through open and muddy ground. The Germans had the advantage and the attackers were literally slaughtered in the open ground. The bodies of, of more than that were missing in action and never found. 250 were placed into a common grave in the pheasant wood pits. Well, the good news is that uh, as at last year, the names of 233, 93% of the 250 buried by the German uh, Bavarian Infantry Regiment soldiers following that Battle of Fromel are now known. The graves of 166 or 66% 66 of those 250 soldiers whose remains were recovered from those communal pits near Pheasant's Wood were reburied with full military honours in the new Fromel Pheasant Wood Military Cemetery. And they're now identified with their names. What I want to, I want to tell you about is the Fromel Primary School and its principal, Madame Natalie Brawl. In this quiet little village of France, the villagers and Madame Brawl didn't need any prodding to name their primary school Les Cobbers or Les Cobbers. <laughs> Cobber is uh, part of Aussie slang. Of course, the meaning of the word cobber is friend. How fitting for this little school to be called lay cobbers. It's because of the passage of John 15, 13, where it says, Greater love has no one than this, than they lay down their life for their friends. Just like soldiers who laid in their lives, the Bible speaks of Jesus' sacrifice that stands at the epicentre of human history. When Jesus laid down his life for us, our Saviour died for our sins, and in his death, God's love was demonstrated. So the Christian life begins when we realise Jesus Christ is at the very centre, and just like the Anzac spirit of mateship, it's got to do with real friendship. Just look at those wonderful verses in John 15, verses 9 to 13 with me again. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I've learned from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Well, three things we learn today as Jesus calls us his friends. Verse 9, to be Jesus' friend to experience his love. Verse 10, it's to obey his commands. Verse 11, it's to share his joy. And it all comes from that key principle verse, verse 13. Jesus calls us his friends because he loves us. Greater love has no one than this. They lay down their life for their friends. And this shows us that the love of Jesus is immense for us. He was speaking of himself in the light of what was going to happen. And so to experience Jesus' love is to know he laid down his life for me. Just think about how huge that is. He laid down his life for me. See, we look back now and we see that the centerpiece of all history is the clear demonstration of God's love for us. Jesus takes upon himself the consequences for my rebellion, your rebellion, that Easter sacrifice and victory. For me, for you, for sin, for all of us, greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friends. And Jesus did that. In his first letter, in, uh, in uh, 1 John 3.16, the Apostle John says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. You see, love is to be enjoyed. Uh, to be enjoyed is to be responded to. How have you responded to Jesus' love for you? That's what Anzac Sunday enables us to consider. The love of others laying down their life for us. Verse 9, as the Father has loved me, so I loved you. Remain in my love. 
I want you to imagine you had an exceptionally rich and adoring uncle who gave you a red Ferrari. Beautiful, sleek, super fast. And whenever you go out though, you simply drive your second-hand, well-loved, mostly reliable Hyundai XL. So while ever the Ferrari sits in the garage, you never get to actually enjoy your uncle's love properly because you've never responded to it. Love to be enjoyed must be responded to. God wants us to respond to his love and now remain in my love, he says. In verse 10, if you obey my commands, you'll remain in my love just as I have obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love. Verse 12, my command is this, love each other as I've loved you. You see, to be Jesus' friend is to obey his command and his command is that we love one another. God's commitment to us is love and our commitment to each other is to be love. We are sent to love one another. We behave though much of the time in this world as if we've been sent to compete with one another. His word tells us we are to truly love each other as he has loved us and the standard he sets is laying down our lives. Verse 13, the key verse, greater love has no one than this. They lay down their life for their friends. So let's understand this. It's not a state that you and I achieve. Uh, the moment we do achieve it, the whole thing, it's over, isn't it? Because once you lay down your life, there's nothing more that you can give. That's it. It isn't a state I've reached. You know, I've kind of got that point now. It's not a pass mark in the love exam. It's a commitment to an ideal. You and I are invited to acknowledge the true goal of our human life is to accept the love of God for us by committing to love other people in the same way he's loved us. We won't achieve this unless we commit ourselves to it. We acknowledge it. We act like he did, like Jesus, and say that's the direction I'm going, Jesus' way, and we keep facing that way. You know, it was said of one of the early climbers of Everest who died in making an attempt on that mountain that when they found his body in the snow, his face was fixed on the summit. His face was to the summit. See, you and I, if we're Christians here today, we have turned our face to the summit, to the light of the love of God. And when we die, I trust our faces will be to that light. If you're not sure, if you haven't committed yourself to Christ, look up. Because you and I can never love as Christ loved us, but we can live our lives acknowledging that that's how we ought to live. That's what we were made for. That's the direction of my life. This is why I have been put on this planet. And as we turn our eyes in that direction, following Jesus, we will abide in him. His fruit will show in our lives. It's been said of the Christian life that it's not so significant where a person has reached. It's much more significant where they're facing, where they are moving. Where are you moving? Because as we face in that direction, if we let that commitment rule our lives, our joy will be complete. It's what it says in verse 11. Jesus says, I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. To be, to be Jesus' friend is to share his joy. It's the joy of completion, not the pleasure of indulgence. It's to know why I was born, what I'm here for. And there's great satisfaction in knowing that. It may not ease the circumstances of life, but it'll equip me to cope with any circumstances. It's been said that if a person has a why for their life, they can live now with almost any how. Because adversity means an opportunity to grow, doesn't it? At the heart of growth is that ability to be resilient. Resilience is all about that ability to cope, to bounce back. How can we develop resilience in these times of pandemic and isolation? Well, Australian clinical psychologist Valerie Ling says adversity means an opportunity for us to grow. And in a recent article, she says, now is the time to invest deeply in God's identity when ours feels like it's falling apart. It may feel like we're losing parts of who we are, what we do and why we love and who we love. So she says, one thing that we can rest on is the unfailing character of God. His steadfast love never ceases. Embrace the opportunities you have to soak in his word that points to his unchanging nature. Take time to recall the message of the Bible that our hope is not based on things seen, but 
on the unseen, 2 Corinthians 4, that we are eternity bound, that not one of our hairs goes uncounted, Luke 12, that not one tear goes unseen, Psalm 56. He's the God of your today and your tomorrow, and his mercies are new every day. And some of those mercies are in the form of healthy psychological habits. And in God's goodness, he's given us many practical ways to protect and build our mental health, to build resilience. It's very helpful, isn't it? So I want you to notice that there's this linked chain that runs through these verses in John 15 that helps us with that. From understanding God's love for us to responding to that love by obeying his command to love each other to get that complete joy. The, true, the joy of that true relationship relating to God as he is. So many people in our community try to relate to God as something less than God. In their heads, they believe in a God of their own making, a God who fits their own mind and reason, a God who suits them and who never disagrees with them. And so there's no joy in that kind of relationship. That God is a yes man, but relating to God as he's revealed himself to us in Jesus, in the Bible, if I get that right, if I put God at the very center of everything and get myself out of that place, because that's what I'm always trying to do, that's when I begin to know his joy. The relationship becomes real. God is God and I am me. That's what it is to be a friend of Jesus, to experience his love, to obey his command, to love one another and to share his joy. So how do you know if you're friends with God? Well, how do you know if you're friends with any human being? Tim Keller says there are two marks in this passage. A friend always lets you in and never lets you down. You give your life for your friend. Make sacrifices. Friendship means getting involved. You, you lay down your conveniences and your schedules. A friend always lets you in, never lets you down. And Jesus laid down his life for us, uniquely, of course, and all of us will die one day. And the minute you realize his death does everything for you, you begin to say, he did this for me. Why? Because you're my friend, my cobber. Do you know that? He loves you not because of how good you are or what you've done or not because you're perfect in any way, shape or form. He loves you because he loves you. And greater love has no one than this. They lay down their life for their friends. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that Jesus calls us his friends. On this Anzac Sunday, we pray you would teach each of that deeply. To know that to be friends with Jesus is to experience his love. That it's to obey his commands and it's to share his joy. Help us, Lord, in our thoughts, in our choices, in our actions, to keep coming back to that key principle, that verse 13 principle, as Jesus calls us his friends because he loves us, that we might lay down our lives for others, for your glory. Amen.
Let us pray for our nation. Almighty God, we pray for our nation. May we always walk in the paths of truth and honour. May we be a beacon of light to all nations who struggle for self-government and freedom. Strengthen our leaders that they may govern us soberly and sincerely and so fulfil their heavy responsibilities. Make us a just people wanting other nations to have the same privileges we claim for ourselves. Help us to honour our native soil with sound manners at home and abroad. Grant this for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. A prayer for peace. God of peace and love, you have made of one blood all nations to dwell upon the earth and by your Son, Jesus Christ, have broken down the walls of partition between race and race. Break down afresh all that divides us from one another. Temper our pride, shame our jealousies, and do away with all prejudice, that the bonds of fellowship and mutual service may unite the East and West, the North and South, that we may strive to live together in perpetual peace to the glory of your great name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer of thanksgiving. Lord our God, we offer to you our heartfelt thanks for all your mercies to our, uh, for our commonwealth, for the devoted lives of those who have made this nation great and free, for deliverance from civil strife and bloodshed and, for the craft and, power of, and from the craft and power of foreign foes, for the brave and faithful dead who willingly laid down their lives on the battlefields of war or who succumbed to the perils of the deep or of the air. We bless you for, your daunt, for their dauntless courage in defence of this country. May our remembrance of their sacrifice be a reminder to present and future generations of the cost of our freedom and of all the benefits we enjoy and an incentive to sacrificial service for our fellow human beings. Help us to treasure our great inheritance, that your blessing may rest on our land till the kingdoms of the world become the kingdom of your Son, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. A prayer of remembrance. Almighty God, King over all, who in the multitude of your mercies have brought us to this day, we thank you for all your goodness and loving kindness, for the gracious providence that guided and sustained us in the dark days of war, and for the defence you raised up for us in our time of need, we thank and praise you. For the grace that upheld us through the years of peril and sorrow, and for the final deliverance you gave us, we praise and bless your holy name. We cried out to you in trouble and you heard. You heard us as we cried out. We put our trust in you and were given courage and confidence. Grant, Lord, that we, remembering your great goodness, may give ourselves in new obedience to your holy will and live as your faithful children through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forevermore. Amen. We come now to the Lord's Supper. And uh, as we are gathering online, I can't give it to you physically, but the good news is that the rubrics in the Book of Common Prayer for the communion of the sick say that when we uh, are not able to take the elements, the bread and the wine, physically, that we can feed on Christ in our hearts by faith. And I want to invite you to do that with us now. And uh, we invite all who love and serve Jesus to join with us in this Lord's Supper. You then who truly repent of your sins and are reconciled with others, intending to lead a new life of joyful obedience to God, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to strengthen and sustain you. But first, let us make a humble confession of our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you made all things and you call everyone to account. With shame we confess the sins we have committed against you in thought, word and deed. We rightly deserve your condemnation. 
we turn from our sins and are truly sorry for them. They are a burden we cannot bear. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all that is past and enable us to serve and please you in newness of life to your honour and glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who's promised to forgive the sins of all who turn to him with repentance and faith, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, strengthen you to do his will and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear these words of assurance for those who truly turn to Christ. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's Matthew 11, verse 28. And John 3, 16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give, uh, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is worthy of all praise. Always and everywhere it's right for us to praise you, Lord, Holy Father, mighty creator and eternal God. And therefore, with all those gathered around your throne in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name in words of never-ending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory to you, Lord Most High. Let's pray the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your many and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table But you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. We thank you, our Father, that in your love and mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross For our salvation. And by this offering of himself once and for all time, Jesus made a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world and commanded us to continue a remembrance of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, merciful Father, and grant that we who receive these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, as we feed on our hearts by faith. According to our Saviour's command, in remembrance of his suffering and death, may be partakers of his body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and when he'd given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the meal, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, come, let us eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for us. And feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us pray. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord and Heavenly Father, in your loving kindness, accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his suffering. With gratitude for all your mercies, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour every person. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. I'd now like to introduce Rear Admiral Lee Goddard. Well, good morning, everybody. My name's uh, Rear Admiral Lee Goddard and I'm actually uh, a local. I live in uh, East Linfield with my family, Alex, and my son, Dominic, and my daughter, Asher and Tilly. And we're close friends with uh, Reverend Matthew, Alice and Ben and Chloe. And it's really special to be here today with the uh, Kalara St. Martin's Anglican Church and those of the uh, East Linfield as well on this uh, very important Anzac Day Sunday to commemorate those who have gone before us, those who are currently serving, of course, those who will serve in the future as well. I've served with the Navy for nearly 33 years, joining as a 17-year-old, and certainly I've seen um, many uh, very challenging situations, both at sea and uh, overseas, both in conflict and in peacekeeping and other situations and border protection. And I admire all those who I've served with and all those who have gone before me. Um, uh, in the room right now behind me, I have some pictures of uh, my great-grandfather from World War I, who was a tunneler um, at the Clara Flyways Church. There's a window dedicated to my wife Alex's uh, great-grandfather, um, Frankie Ray, who was killed um, at Bully Court after landing on Gallipoli on the 26th of uh, April. And there's also a picture behind me of Jefferson H. Walker, the captain of HMAS Parramatta, a ship that I served on who was sunk in World War II during the very bloody battle of Tobruk. His family gave me his picture of medals so that we could remember him in such tragic circumstances. I want to particularly acknowledge this Anzac Day though, all those who serve the COVID-19 and the bushfires has certainly been very challenging for Australia and also the whole world. I'm currently involved in border protection and it's been a very ethical and very uh, operationally challenging time for our leaders for us as a society, and also for those who serve on the front line. A great, great empathy for those who have been away from family, who are feeling physically challenged, who are feeling very tired and very uncertain. It is a great period of anxiety for all. So what does Anzac Day mean to me? It means reflecting on service, reflecting what is great about being an Australian, and also about the fact that many young men and women have served this country selfishly and have lost their lives and of course have left behind societies, families and those who have mourned for many years onwards. And while we've created legends from these stories, quite rightfully, we've also sometimes forgotten the great sadness that should have been left behind as well. And of course in modern society we have those who have recently returned from conflict and are still suffering now. So they are in our prayers today. So I would like to now at the behest of Matt, read the commemoration prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for all those who did not count their lives dear to themselves, but laid them down for our sakes. Let the memory of their devotion and sacrifice always be an example to us, that we may live as faithful servants of him who died for our eternal salvation. We look forward with thanksgiving to that time when we will join 
with all who have died in the faith, in the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where sorrow and pain are no more, and where every tear will be wiped away. In Jesus' name we will pray. Amen. So my thoughts are with you all today. My thoughts are with those in Australia who have anxieties and have pain and have fear and have uncertainty. And I want to admire the men and women who have served Australia today, yesterday and tomorrow. And they're not just the Australian Defence Force. They're also our policemen, our health workers and those many others that serve Australia. So thank you very much. <laughs>
so much for joining us for Online Church today. A couple of things as we go today. Uh, If you would like to join in our Christianity Explored group or in our Introduction to the Bible PTC group, don't forget to let me know by filling in a Connect card. Secondly, what we want to do is collect some of those things when we go shopping and bring them into church on the first Saturday of the month. So we're only going to have a collection day on the first Saturday of the month. I'm going to ask you to bring it into either St. Martin's Kalara Parish Hall or St. Peter's Church uh, on the first Saturday of the month between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. on the first Saturday of the month. Bring one or some of the things, uh, drop them off, and then Anglicare will come and pick all those things up and we'll be able to share those in particular with people who are in deep need at this time. It's been so great that we can meet together online and gather together. And I pray that you know the love and friendship of Jesus this Anzac Sunday and in and through our church community and local community. And if you want to find out more about Jesus, if you want to find out more about that hope, please contact me. Fill in one of the Connect cards. Our church building isn't open, but our hearts are. And I'd love it if everyone could take the time to fill in one of those Connect cards. That would be really awesome. So our care cluster groups um, are going to be meeting very shortly over Zoom for morning tea or supper. And so I pray that that's a really wonderful time for fellowship, encouragement and prayer. Well, let me pray as we close our time together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn towards turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.